Who knew that Duke weekend would be a huge weekend for Florida State on the recruiting trail, but that's exactly what it is. Speaking now with War Chant Senior Recruiting Analyst Michael Langston, my name is Tom Lang, and we are previewing the top players on campus in Tallahassee for a primetime kick on a Saturday night against Duke. Michael, good evening to you, and uh, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, busy weekend. Uh, you're, you're talking around – close to 70, maybe past 70 uh, recruits that will be on campus this weekend. We already have a list going, so I'm not going to cover every single guy. I'm just going to cover some main ones. All eyes on offense for me is Osman Cromo out of Lee County High School over there in uh, Georgia. Four-star running back. I saw him earlier this year. This kid is uh, a different breed to what FSU has on their roster, and that's saying a lot when you consider – what FSU's running back room is big kid, physical, really fast uh, for a big guy, probably around 215, uh, you know, Tom. And just uh, kind of reminds me, you watch him when you watch Eddie George type. Uh, I think mm-hmm. FSU has some juice in this recruitment. I went to see him early this year. It was pretty obvious how how they're really trending, you know, high for you. I think early on everyone was thinking Georgia, maybe Alabama, but FSU is a team to watch. This is a massive visit to have him on on campus this weekend. So that's certainly a big name at running back that I'm I'm looking at. Um, people, I guess people can go to the list, but I think another intriguing ma- uh, visitor again is Kobe Howard, 2024 wide receiver out of Western over there in uh, Davie, Florida. He visited last weekend. I think that's certainly significant. A name I think people will certainly recognize, four-star Devin Carter, is the son of Dexter Carter, 2026 FSU commit. He will also be there. Four-star wide receiver Josiah Abdullah is making his first fit at FSU. That's one that I think they've they've really put a lot of work in. That's one to keep an eye on to see you know how that visit goes. Um, and then moving down as we go to the tight ends, Elias Williams, a uh, I think arguably one of the top tight ends in the country for the you know the 2025 class. Um, FSU already has Landon Thomas who will also be there, but um, Elias is kind of their the main guy that they're focused on. He's committed to Georgia. FSU likes flipping Georgia guys, apparently, and so they're certainly trying to make another move there. They also have a few other four-star tight ends and Marshall Pritchett and Hayes Kent out of uh, Georgia as well. So those are some guys. And on the offense line, there's two guys that I'm kind of locked in on. Four-star offense lineman Mac Buchanan out of Seminole. I've been in Sanford, Florida, and then also four-star offensive lineman Solomon Thomas. Solomon is actually probably one of their top overall targets, I think, for 2025. That's a guy I feel really good of of where FSU is trending. Would not shock me if you see an early decision from him. Maybe it might even come after after this game. So we'll we'll see uh, you know how that materializes. Um, so those are some of the the main ones for the offense and then defense. I've already mentioned this guy, and we'll talk a little bit more about him. Artavius Jones, four-star defensive tackle. He's visiting. I have him on flip watch just in case. We'll see how that materializes. You know, we, we're still waiting on the LJ McCray news, so that could impact, you know, the pursuit there. They're also hosting four-star defensive tackle Nasir Johnson, a Florida commit. That one will be a little tougher to get because he feels really good about, you know, where he sits with Florida. So I think those are uh, those are kind of the guys in the trenches. And the one that I didn't expect, uh, you know, there's always surprises. We'll see if he shows. Um, Zion Grady, four-star defensive end, 2025. He visited last weekend. He is expected uh, to be at FSU, but he's also expected to be at Alabama. So that's see where he shows up or whatever. You also have four-star defensive end Xavier Griffin, who I'm very high on for the 2026 class. That's a guy I'm keeping an eye on. And that linebacker, Tom, get it some linebackers, man. That's what, it, that's what FSU fans want. Jaden Perlott. Georgia commit 2025, the teammate of KJ Bolden. He will be making his first, I guess, for a home game type of uh, visit to FSU this weekend. That's one that I've I've told people to keep an eye on. I made a pick for FSU early this year. I still feel good about that, but Georgia's not giving up the ghost. They're pushing hard, so they're trying to keep them. But that's a guy I've, I've really got my eye on. Two other linebackers I like that's on my mind. Ethan Pritchard, who I think FSU is trending well for in 2025 class. And then Tarvis Alford, who's actually a Florida lean, but he's visiting FSU for the first time for a game. So 
those are some guys that I have in mind. Charles Lesser, KJ Bolden, both of them are expected to be here from DB. And then a few DBs that I like that are certainly interest for me is Ivan Taylor, 2025 DB. I think Notre Dame's kind of been the the heavy favorite, but the fact he's visiting this weekend intrigues me a lot. So him being on campus, um, Hilton Stubbs is a 2025 DB safety. He's on the same team as Tramel Jones on that Mandarin team. So that's a guy they've been, been kind of slowly trending for. Uh, and then another guy is Chris Awald, Michigan commit. He's on one. Of, he's one of those Chaminade kids that's on there. I feel like FSU starting to pick up steam with that one. And let me catch my breath because that's a, <laughs> kind of a wrap of some of the main guys that are going to be there this weekend. There you, well, that's a, that's a ton of names. And uh, <laughs> as you've seen on the screen, uh, Director Ben behind the scenes has put up a lot of the information and player profiles. I'll circle back to Perlot. I'm interested in that one because yeah. he's been very public saying wherever KJ Bolden goes, he will follow. Right. And, and then it hasn't been as quick. So KJ says yes to Florida State. There's there's a lingering process here, but if KJ is going to be on campus and Perlot's going to be there too, that seems interesting to me. And then one other question I have for you, Michael, that this one will get you out on uh, because everybody can find more information about <laughs> the dozens of kids that are going to be here on the PRB, the premium recruiting board on warchant.com. And that question would be about LJ McCray. In terms of if the news is good for Florida State, do you think that scares some of these other prospects off? Or does it make them more apt to come to Florida State if they're in that same position, that same position group of defensive line? Yeah, it concerns me because of, you know, when you get LJ McCray, LJ can play inside, outside. We don't know where he's going to play. I'd say he starts off at defensive end, but still it's going to have effect on other guys. Uh, maybe somebody like Artavius Jones or um, you know, Nasir Johnson that we mentioned. I, I think that's kind of my question going the weekend. That's kind of one of my you know, key three things to watch, not to give away my articles, but you know, just how is that going to impact? What's going to be the pursuit like if, say, LJ commits like during the afternoon or something, yep. you know, what's going to be their level of pursuit? So that's kind of something I'm kind of monitoring. So it could impact those other guys just on – um, you know, just what it would do. Uh, I think Nasir Johnson, they're going to still have to work regardless. So mm -hmm. that one, I don't know how much it would, but I think Artavius, I feel like there's some momentum, you know, trending with FSU. So you wonder how much they'll pump the brakes or push it forward and say, you know what, we want, we all, we want him too, because we don't know where LJ could end up. And mm -hmm. then, um, and then there's another visitor I'm, I'm not at liberty to discuss that's potentially visiting this weekend, but, um, people will find out later, but, uh, that's another one that could impact, uh, you know, something to do with their, their recruitment and how they recruit other positions. Well, Michael, I hope it's LJ McCray who just shows up, walks to the 50 <laughs> yard line before kickoff of the game and says, this is where I'm going. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. more information is readily available at warchant.com, the premium recruiting board for the details on any number of these kids that are being that are coming to campus this weekend. Michael has the latest for you. We will have you covered throughout the weekend. This is one of those double dip kind of weekends, folks. Florida State kicks off at 7:30. You don't always have commitments in the air before kickoff, but this is a, a crossover weekend for warchant.com. So stay yep. tuned to the channel. Stay tuned to warchant.com. Sign up today for a dollar for one month at the website. You will not be disappointed. He's Michael. I'm Tom. We'll talk to you soon on Warchant TV.